I don't know how long ago or if at all you've read the Song of Songs, but it's a love story between a Shulamite woman and her lover, which turns out to be King Solomon. It's an incredible story and it's an incredible bit of prose and poetry. But in chapter 2, verse number 1, she suddenly declares that I am a rose of Sharon, that I am a lily of the valley. And you know, I think this season that we're in is calling out for you to re-identify with who you are, for you to declare to the world again, this is who I am. We've been through some rough times and there's been some stripping back, some laying bare. And sometimes we can think that life is all about circumstances, but it seems to me that life's all about identity. That if you can get your identity right, then your identity frames your future. Your identity frames your accessibility to your God-given future. Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, beckons us to guard our heart with all diligence for out of it flows everything we do. Another version says that the boundaries of our life are determined by the condition of our heart. It's difficult sometimes because we can see that the boundaries have closed in on us. For many of us, life's more difficult now than it ever used to be. But that's because God's bringing us back to identity. And for the Shulamite woman, when she said, that I am a rose of Sharon. Everything started to change around about her life. I love the Shulamite woman. She declared who she was, not who she wasn't. She declared who she's becoming, not what's become of her. If you go back a chapter to chapter one, verse number five, she says that I've been burnt by the sun, yet I'm lovely. She, she recalls the abuse she had from her brothers who sent her out to labor during the heat of the day while they drank pina coladas. And she felt abused by them. She, She felt abandoned by them. She was looking after their vineyards while her vineyard remained neglected. So she said, I've been darkened by the sun. My son's crap, my my skin is cracked. It's, It's, I'm weathered, I'm beaten, but I'm lovely. And you know, it's easy for us, so many of us to be identified by our losses and identified by our abandonment, identified by our persecutions and The Song of Songs is helping us to move beyond our pain, to move beyond our past and to move from chapter one to chapter two and to join the Shulamite woman and say, hang on a second. I'm not darkened by the sun yet lovely. I'm a rose of Sharon. I'm a lily of the valley. In Jeremiah chapter 1, God said to Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see the branch of an almond tree. God said, that's right. I can see Israel starting to bud again, starting to become fruitful again. And God said, what else do you see? And he said, I see a boiling pot tilting from the north towards us. And God said, you're right. That's the judgment that's yet to come. But most people see the boiling pot first. And in their testimony, in their declaration, they say life's terrible. And for many of us, life has been terrible. But God loved Jeremiah's declaration that he firstly saw an almond tree that's about to come into fruitfulness. And if you could change your confession, and if you could see beyond the mountain and see beyond the difficulty and begin to confess, this is who I'm becoming. This is who I am. 
you'll find you'll open the door to some incredible movements of the Holy Spirit that he's been waiting for. Because God knows that identity comes before future. The second thing about this woman that I love is that she defined herself. She didn't leave it to the definition of her friends. And the thing about our friends is that they know us for who we are, not for who we're becoming. They love us for who we've been, even though we've been slightly annoying. But everybody's got an impression of who you are. But nobody knows who you're becoming, only Jesus. And often it's easy to fall into the trap of worrying about what other people think about us. And the problem with that is that some days we're popular, some days we're unpopular. Sometimes we're on top of their list, sometimes we're on the bottom of their list. Sometimes we're loved, sometimes we're hated. And it's about time you stop worrying about what other people think about you. And it's about time that you pull yourself back from the age in which we live, which is an age of reputation, and started to declare, this is who I am. And sometimes when you do that, you do offend a few people and you do disappoint some people. If you've been a caterpillar with all the other caterpillars and then you're transformed into being a butterfly, you start to fly around. All the caterpillars weren't expecting it for a start. And secondly, they're either jealous of you or missing you or feel abandoned by you. But you can't always be popular when you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And it's time you started to take your identity, not from what they say about you, but from who you're becoming, what you say about you. I don't know if you've ever heard of imposter syndrome, but a lot of pop stars and a lot of TV personalities claim they've got it. In other words, they feel like if people knew how untalented they are, they probably wouldn't be in the job that they're in or as popular as they are. And sometimes Christians can have this imposter syndrome. If you knew how sinful I was, if you knew how terrible I was, if you knew my history, if you knew my secrets, then you probably wouldn't like me and you'd probably leave me for dead. And a lot of Christians feel like God is the same, that they've got to somehow impress God, otherwise their future would be null and void. But I need to declare that this scripture, I'm the Rose of Sharon, I'm the lily of the valley, for many centuries was attributed to Jesus Christ. And I can see why, because he is the bloodied rose that leads us freely into the kingdom of God. He is the lily of the valley that we walk with and walk past in order to get to the mountain of our God. But really, it's talking about the Shulamite woman. But how can the translators of the Bible be so confused? Well, I've got a feeling it's because it's both about Christ and about us, that we are in Christ. And when you get your identity from being in Christ, everything changes because you're not your own. And if you could realize today that you've been bought with a price that this life that you live these plans that you have are not your plans it's not your life it's his life lived through you that you're actually here against your will then it's not that you're an imposter it's not that you're beyond your ability it's not if people knew your sins satan wants to cause you to be uncovered and yet you're forever covered by the blood of jesus christ that you're His, 
They're his plans, not your plans. It's his dreams, not your dreams. It's his forgiveness, not your self-forgiveness. It's his love. It's not your self-love. It's all about him. It's not your justice. It's he's your justifier. It's not your efforts. It's his efforts through you. And if Christ is the rose of Sharon, if Christ is the lily of the valley, then it puts a highlighted pen on you that you are also a rose of Sharon and a lily of the valley. Another thing I adore about the Shildamite woman is that she defined herself as a flower. She defined herself as a rose and as a lily. And this generation has a problem because we oversize everything. Everything's got to be supersized. And there's a lot of lessons to learn from that. Sometimes you can attempt big things and fail on all the big things you attempt. Everybody wants to be a redwood and not a rose. Everyone wants to be an ivy and not a lily. We want to be a cedar of Lebanon. We want to be an oak tree by the Jordan. We want to be a eucalypt tree in Australia. But she wanted to be. But she wanted to be a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valley. Stop trying to please everyone and do too many things badly instead of lesser things better. Someone once said that big doors of opportunity swing off small hinges. But it seems like in this age, no one wants to be a hinge. Everybody wants to be a door. I love Rosa Parks, who's one of the pioneers of the civil rights movement in America. And the big thing she's famous for is hopping on a bus and refusing to give up her seat for a white person on a bus. And she became incredibly significant and in what may change the history for black lives in America through one act of defiance. And sometimes we think that it's armies that change the world, that it's massive movements that change the world, but often it's small but significant things. The other thing about flowers is that they're very, very sensitive. They're sensitive to rain, sensitive to sunlight. They're sensitive to storms. They're sensitive to darkness. And it would almost make me hesitate preaching about roses and lilies, to, especially to the men across our world. But you know, the Bible says... Paul says that when I'm weak, when I, then I'm strong. He says that, that I've been afflicted with a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan. And he prayed three times for it to go, but somehow it never went. And then he realized the source of his anointing, the source of his power was coming from this thorn in the flesh. All of us have a thorn in the flesh. All of us have a limp. All of us have a vulnerability. And I think if we could just stop showing off a little bit and stop parading our strengths and parading like macho people, just everything that we've done that's been successful and realize the key to our future strength is actually in our weaknesses. And often we complain that millennials are sensitive, but I think sensitivity is a move of the Spirit of God. As long as you don't get lost in your sensitivity, as long as you don't make it all about you, as long as you don't just bleed over everyone, as long as you don't wear your heart and your sleeve too much, because... That just creates self-obsession and that's not good for anybody. But sensitivity is different from self-obsession. And I think if we can be more vulnerable and more authentic and more real with each other in this next season, I think we could create better, better sisterhood and better brotherhood and stronger communities. And we could also usher in the anointing God needed to see the great revival that every one of us is longing to see.
The last thing I love about the flowers analogy is that flowers define the seasons. And that's what you need. You need to define the seasons by declaring who you are. A lot of us are waiting for this current season to change, but God's waiting for the season in your heart to change. I love what Solomon said to the Shulamite woman in chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. He said, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. He says, See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. And the season of singing has come. Stop waiting for the natural when God's waiting for the spiritual. We need to draw a line in the sand between yesterday's season and tomorrow's season. And you can do that through your declaration that I am a rose of Sharon, that I am a lily of the valley. Start using flowers in your identity and you'll see seasons changed in your experience. The last thing I want to say is that in chapter 2 verse 15, Solomon says, catch for us the little foxes that ruin the vineyards. And there's just a few foxes around that I think it's important for you to kill. And the first fox is the fox of self-justification. There's no need for you to justify yourself to other people or explain yourself too much to other people. There's an expression, don't cast your pearl before swine. In other words, don't take your treasures and spill them out into people who don't understand that they're treasures, who treat it like rubbish. And you can spend the rest of your life self-justifying and working out the winning of arguments and, and uh, how, to, how to win over people's comments on social media. But it's a little fox and it's out to get you. God's our justifier. And the justice of your cause will one day shine like the noonday sun. Everything's proved right, eventually, by its fruitfulness. The second little fox is the fox of loss. In that sometimes we can think, gosh, we're, this is a losing business. But you've got to realize that from John 15, that God prunes the vine so that it would be even more fruitful. And because God's destiny for you is more fruit than ever before, then we're undergoing a season of pruning. And so it's not really loss, it's, it's preparation. God's taking stuff away to make room for the bigger and the better and the brighter that God has for your future. And so you want to kick out the fox of loss because it's not actually loss, it's preparation. And the last fox is the fox of the past. The Bible says in Isaiah, don't dwell upon the past. It says, forget what's behind you. Behold, I do a new thing. Can't you perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert, streams in the wasteland. And it's very hard just to forget the past because difficult things have happened in the past and also delightful things have happened. But the Bible is saying, don't get too fixated over the past. Don't, don't take in the fox of the past. Don't be over attached to the past. Because when God takes the past away, He's doing it in order to make room for a new beginning. There was a, an expression from a band called Sparks. It's from a 1930s Hollywood movie. And the expression is, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. And you're not big enough for both your past and your future. That's why God takes the past away to make room for what's about to come. There's a movie back in the 1980s that has reached cult status and it's called Princess Bride. And in it, there's a man called Inigo Montoya and his father was killed. And through the killing of his father, he lost his sense of purpose and lost his sense of identity. And he wanted it back. And the key part of the movie is when he said to himself, over and over again, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father, prepare to die. And eventually he confronted his father's killer, but full of confidence and full of a sense of dignity and a sense of strength. Because every time he said, my name is, his shoulders went back, his 
back was straighter. Every time he said, you killed my father, prepare to die. He almost said, this is my purpose in life. This is who I am. This is who my father is. This is my identity. This is my future. And if you could do that, if you could say my name is, if you could declare your identity, stop saying that you're broken. Stop saying that this is the end. Stop saying that you've been abandoned and neglected and start to identify with who you are in Christ and identify with who God's created you to be. If you could realize more and more that you are in Christ, it's who you are and whose you are, then you'll be off on a flying start to the future that God has for you because He knows that your identity creates your opportunity to move in to your God-given future. with a confession that my wife Jen loves Brian Adams. She's never moved beyond easy listening 80s rock music and you know recently we went through very difficult times together and, and uh, a lot of challenges and I thought I'd make a playlist for Jen when we went up to Scotland and I found this album uh, that's from 20 years ago and it's it's the album is called stallion of Cimarron and it's about a horse called Spirit and the horse goes through a lot of difficulties and it's captured and it's set free and it escapes and it's captured and and all kinds of things and just simply wants to die but the lyrics meant so much to us and especially the last part of it but here's the lyrics uh, to the song send the bugle now send the bugle now tell them that I don't care there's no road I know that leads me anywhere. Without a light, I'll f I fear I'll stumble in the dark, lay down, decide not to go on. Then from on high, somewhere in the distance, there's a voice that calls. Remember who you are. If you lose yourself, your courage will soon follow. So be strong, remember who you are. You're a soldier now, fighting in a battle to be free once more. Yeah, that's what you're fighting for. And I think there's a voice right now that, from on high that is calling you to remember who you are. And you might be saying, send the bugle now, that everything's collapsed, that things have fallen apart, that it's been so stripped back that you've lost your momentum and you've lost your sense of identity. But it's there. It just needs to be dug out. It's like an iceberg that it's in the water that we're calling forth what's actually in us. It's the call of God to better days. Father God, I pray for every person who's watching right now and every person who's listening right now that instead of hearing the bugle they'd hear the voice of God saying remember who you are this is who you are you're a rose of Sharon a lily of the valley and Father I pray God that people would start to rise up and capture the very essence of who they are and whose they are that they'd remember they, they are in Christ not exposed that there is no shame and no guilt. There's no self-justification. There's no loss, only a preparation for more. And I pray that courage would enter into every person listening. Faith would enter into their hearts. And hope of better days would rise within them. And Father God, bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone said, God bless you.